Welcome to The Lex Factor, a lawfully good podcast where we'll brief you on the business of law so you can build a better practice and capture more billable hours. Everybody, welcome to another episode of The Lex Factor. It's your host, Lauren, here. And Brad Pobble, the co-host. Nice to meet you all again. <laughs> You're not really meeting them if we've had multiple episodes That's where right. they've, they've gotten well, to know ev- us already. Well, every time you know, we have this podcast, I feel like I meet new people. So that's kind of why I felt well, that. Well, actually, you took the words right out of my mouth because we actually happen to have a new person here with us Really? Today. Yeah. Crazy, who? right? Who? Who would so, that be? So today we have Chris Alexander. He is the Lexicon Director of Procurement and Asset Protection. Welcome. Well, hey, Chris. Hello, everyone. Wow, it's so nice to have you here. Thank you. I appreciate it. You look very it. nice in your outfit today. Well, thank you very much. My wife picked it out for me. Oh, Aww. really? That is <laughs> you no, not You got your really. own outfit? Did I you did. tell her yeah. you were going on air today so you needed to look your best? She did tell me that I have to start wearing pocket squares because it's a fashion faux pas if you're wearing a suit jacket without <laughs> a pocket. Fa- <laughs> yep. So. Really? I didn't know that. Yep. You're a faux pas. I'm a faux pas. You're a faux pas. I don't like being a faux pas. <laughs> I did notice your pocket square, though, when you came in, and I was like, that's a nice pocket square. Well, thank it, like, you. It takes it up a level. It Brad does. looks like he's going to cry. <laughs> I am. I'm a little, dis- I'm a little upset. They actually, kind of like it. a pocket protector, they make oh. little holders oh, for Oh, my it. gosh. You have a yeah. pocket square protector. If you'd like protector. to borrow it, I think it would go with your— It actually, they uh, are oh kind of matching. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That is beautiful. Look at that. Oh, I didn't even undo is my that pocket yet. <laughs> 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 what about the back? Did you uh, cut the little string? Oh, for the, the tail? Yes, yeah. yes. No. 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 <laughs> I, actually, I have to return this coat tonight <laughs> after this podcast. <laughs> so what what exactly is procurement and asset planning? Procurement, in in a nutshell, is the, the buying of goods and services for a company on their behalf. You're acting as their agent. You're looking out for their best interests and... From a, from a very fundamental standpoint, it is about being a, a trustworthy agent for those people. You are their steward of their company in a sense. You are uh, spending money that isn't yours and you have to be considerate of that at all times. From, a, from an asset planning aspect, uh, and I, I think we're going to talk about this in more detail a little bit later, but asset planning is – Uh, has its roots in looking forward and budgeting for capital expenses, protecting, yes, protecting those capital uh, pieces of equipment throughout their usable life, and then ultimately uh, budgeting for replacements whenever the end of life is reached. Mm -hmm. So in layman's terms, you shop. Yes. That was very belittling, right? No, you no. do way more than that. But, I mean, there's probably a, a fun side to it for you as well because you do get to shop and you're not spending your own money. Right, yeah. I mean, it's uh, a lot of a lot of numbers, a lot of spreadsheets, uh, a lot of conversations with suppliers, negotiating with people mm-hmm. on a day-in and day-out basis. Uh, it, it, it's interesting because a lot of the skills that you develop in a career like this, you get to take with you yeah. in your personal life when you're going to buy a car and, and house, That's anything like that. That's a great like point, yeah. yeah. And, and people kind of feel a little bit, uh, they, they maybe underestimate your skills whenever you're sitting across from them at a car dealership mm. and, and you can really... Then you're like, wait. Right. So next time I buy something, <laughs> right. can you come with me? Absolutely. <laughs> Will you come with me? <laughs> I love it. I love it. But I mean, at the end of the day, you are you're spending someone else's money. But I would think it'd almost be easier for you to handle that negotiation and being a little more, little bit more strict and difficult because you're not. You're not dealing with it, like, with your own money. Yeah. You want to make sure to do the right thing for the company, the right thing for your, you know, who you're representing. I think the word you're looking for is objectivity. There, that is yes. exactly so, what I was not psychic. looking for, but <laughs> you, you, you found it and you made it work. <laughs> from a, from yeah, an like ethics... when it's yourself, you're kind of like, oh, I'm kind of embarrassed. I don't want to be too much of a jerk, but it's your job. You have to right. get when, somebody and the best. Yeah. When you are buying for yourself, it's difficult to separate wants from needs mm-hmm. very, oh, uh, that's very and, true. and make good decisions that make financial sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever you are trusting another company like Lexicon to do that for you, we will help you identify what those wants and needs are. That's a good point. And and really go out and attack the supply chain to address the needs first with the priority being on the most critical functions needed to support your business. That's something I definitely didn't think of. You mentioned a little bit uh, 
Lauren, about, you know, that's kind of fun in some mm-hmm. ways. What What is the most fun that you have? Like, what part of your role? For my particular role as a, as a director within the company, I would say my biggest sense of enjoyment comes from developing my team and leading the people that, wow. that work for me. Uh, whenever I was doing the buying and contract mm-hmm. management mm-hmm. every day, my own personal – I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to this – but my own personal uh, enjoyment – came from legal terms, uh-huh. uh, I, understanding contract language. Wow. Uh, that yeah. takes a special, that uh, definitely a special is. kind of fun there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very dry, uh, but I enjoy it. I'm really good at it. And that was just something that I fit my personality, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, speak- I don't, I'm not li- very lively on the weekends, <laughs> if you're wondering. <laughs> Only at work. Oh, rolling Only up with a nice glass of, of wine in a right. contract. Not, <laughs> right. Non-alcoholic wine. <laughs> yes. Because yes. O'Doul's. Milk. Pop me that milk. O'Doul's. <laughs> warm milk. Milk, warm milk. <laughs> Maybe a little strawberry syrup in there and if you're getting fruits. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, speaking of nerdy, <laughs> not to go too far there, but uh, – just kind of talk a little bit about the difference between procurement and purchasing. A lot of people think it's the same thing. Is it the same thing? Is it different? Talk a little bit about that. Like many industries, uh, the supply chain industry has evolved over the last 20 to 30 years, and people tend to be very sensitive and particular about what kind of title they have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a, a lot of uh, you know rubbish, if you will. It's <laughs> not really a big deal, but in the in the foundation of the terms, purchasing is a very business as usual, task driven type of function where you are addressing that day's needs or that week's needs. And procurement is something different. Procurement is a strategic look at the way that an organization or, or a firm spends money and identifying strategic opportunities to either increase the value of what they're getting for that spend or to maintain that value and reduce the spend in some way. Yeah. And pulling out those wants and needs. Exactly. That was my I think that was my favorite comment so far. I never thought about it like that when you're purchasing for yourself. One, you may not have the the skill set or the experience to truly understand how to negotiate and how much you should be paying for a certain item or for a certain service, but you're sitting there thinking, my firm really needs this, but at the end of the day, it could just be something that you really want and you're not able to separate Right. Those. It could be something that makes your particular job easier, yeah. but how – how can you put that in the front of, yeah. yes, of yeah. what the company needs and what the company is willing to pay for? Yes. And that is a nice look and assessment that you could do for organizations, you know, really look at those needs and then really dive in to get the best price for those needs. You can always tackle the other items later. You're exactly right. It requires that both sides of the, the conversation, whether that be lexicon and a supplier or lexicon and a client, have a, a firm understanding of what those needs and wants are what we're willing to pay for, what we would view as a value add but aren't mm-hmm. willing to pay for. And then also when you're taking that back in and analyzing solutions side by side, not necessarily uh, cutting out any opinions over wants and mm-hmm. needs but being very clear and very strict about how the needs are weighed and that the wants are a tertiary. Mm-hmm. Uh, Against the value and understanding. Yeah, that's that correct. makes sense. I think initially what comes to people's heads are reams of paper, pencils, pens, office supplies, stuff like that. But obviously, as we all know here, procurement is more than that. What else is there um, besides those tangible items? And really, what other ways from a procurement standpoint can you help firms? The very basic aspect is exactly what you mentioned with looking at office supplies, beverage programs, uh, maybe one-off spend here and there where our superior buying power as an organization could help save them money in the short term. But where we go a step beyond that is by partnering with other lexicon services uh, organizations like Mm -hmm. our ITIS group, our finance and accounting group, to help you plan out that spend over a protracted period of time so that you can capitalize those Mm -hmm. assets and depreciate them over their usable life or shift gears and maybe you take that out on a lease because it's not a 
a capitalized asset okay. in general. That makes so sense. helping helping companies that especially have no leasing experience, yeah. helping them understand the nuances of that business and how it could make sense for them from a from a gap accounting standpoint and how to how to amortize that expense over a period yeah. of time. And just the time and the headache it could cause to really do something like that on your own. It takes away so much from your billable hours. I mean, that could be a full-time job in itself. I mean, it really is a full-time job. So imagine you're you're managing cases, you're tracking time, you're you're going to court. But now I have to figure out, do I lease a product or do I actually buy it? I don't even know how to attempt something like that. It's a, it's a full-on expertise. Yeah. And yeah. there are industries, uh, public accounting is a good example of that. There are industries that are out there dedicated to doing this for businesses every day. We are doing that for the legal industry. That is a great benefit. I mean, really, to even start to dive in to understand, should I capitalize it? Should I, you know, just lease it? Not. I mean, all of those, it goes well beyond just that purchasing power. Right. I mean, that's a great service. It's those kinds of questions that we can ask our client firms that they may have never even thought about. Yeah. It's not just buying products that you may need in your office or getting you the best deal. It's really looking at that long term and doing what's best for your company. Right. For your firm. Yeah. Do you own or lease your building? Are you yeah. responsible for maintenance of the HVAC, for instance? Yeah. Uh, when it comes time to replace that, that might be thirty to $150,000, depending on oh, wow. the size of your building. And it never happens at a time that's <laughs> ideal. No, it never does. <laughs> it's just does. like owning a house, right? <laughs> everything just breaks. You're exactly it's right. It's like there's yeah. some creature out there that knows when everybody can't afford something and they're like, wait, I'm going to get you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just I, wait. I can feel that that creature he's when it's coming sneaking for you. in. Yeah. That's why he's you. so good because he's psychic and can feel that creature. Oh. That's what it is. That's the true. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm getting into this. this like, guy, well, you mentioned the conjuring earlier. Mm-hmm. Creature from the conjuring like coming up behind Chris. I could so see it. Or like the nun. Beware the shadow people. Yeah. Oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> That's there creepy. Was, there was like a... What was it? A white noise movie years ago yes. too with mm-hmm. shadow people. That was terrifying. Shadow people are just scary. Anyway. They are. And ju- they just need people to, in the they shadows. They need to stop. They need to stop. <laughs> you, uh, Chris, you had mentioned buying power. Yeah. And uh, I, I wrote down a note about that. Uh, can you kind of walk through some scenarios? I know as a let's say you have a single attorney, a law firm. You know, you call the vendors. You don't have much power to negotiate. You don't have, you know, I'm one person. I only need one thing. So how does that work in? Give me some examples that are tangible about that. On the on the surface, you know, a very basic example would be that, you know, we come in and help you streamline your supply chain. Uh, you contact us when you need something. You don't have to go out and find who can provide this, you know that Lexicon can, and we will track down a a great supplier for you. That buying power comes from us doing this for large firms already, Mm -hmm. uh, organizations or or firms that operate in 30-plus states in the U.S. with hundreds of employees. Yeah, and strictly firms too, not other industries. That's exactly right. I mean, these are services that are truly catered to the law industry. Mm -hmm. And our ability to go out and get that price, that great pricing that we have competitively negotiated for a firm of 600 people, oh. we get to extend to uh, you can the, basically the, tack onto that 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 the staff member and that attorney yeah. that are in Wichita, Kansas, uh, and we get to give you that dollar and eighty seven cent box of pens instead yeah. of the two thirty nine. I'm very very basic example, yeah, but yeah. it also extends to uh, Microsoft licensing. Mm-hmm. It goes yeah. into tech hardware and any other type of software that you might find yourself on. Yeah. Well, I, I do know even from an IT perspective, there's always tiers. You know, when you reach that certain tier of buying, the price reduce. Yeah. Right. And so we're, you're, that means you automatically get to jump to that next tier. That's, but, just, that's a nice benefit. Yeah. I, I mean, mean it, it's like everything you buy. You know, you go and buy toilet paper or paper towels. You buy in bulk, you get that discount, but you're a solo practitioner. You can't necessarily do that. So if you can work with a company that allows you to basically tack on to that bulk order, you're going to reap the benefits of that as well. You're exactly right. And that is I'll say the core offering mm-hmm. uh, for us, it's the most tactical uh, and the easiest to implement across firms of any size. Where we can really provide an advantage to a firm is 
not only looking at your daily spend, but looking at your examining your in place solutions for overlap, mm-hmm. which we would call wasted spend, or providing a gap analysis where we might be discovering something that you could be offering clients that you aren't mm-hmm. uh, as the clients come in your door, or you may have a risk or a liability somewhere that you haven't recognized yet that may need to be addressed. Mm-hmm. So what's really the process to do that? You know, a firm reaches out to Lexicon, has some interest in using our procurement services. Ultimately, would you and your team go in and do some sort of assessment, evaluate everything as a whole, or really do you focus on their immediate wants and needs? How does that How does that happen? I'll say we would prefer to get our foot in the door with those basic services uh-huh. and helping you save money in the short term while developing a sense of trust across the relationship where you know we deliver on the commitments that we make Mm -hmm. and are willing to let us a little bit further into your work life Mm -hmm. to look at what's behind the curtain. How do we turn this into an Egg McMuffin? You know, what do we do here uh, that – what's our special sauce? Yeah. So let's talk the elephant in the room, Chris. COVID. I mean, how has it affected firms in general from a procurement standpoint and really – so many people, regardless of the industry, are working from home nowadays. You know, how does that affect procurement when you're working from home? How are you managing your supplies? How are you getting new supplies? COVID-19 and, and the current global pandemic has been pretty challenging from a supply chain standpoint. Uh, having been in the supply chain industry for 15 years, I have never seen such a dire scarcity for Mm. materials and and items that are needed to maintain a safe work environment. Uh, A safe work environment. Yes. That's scary. Yes. It's it's really put stress on poor supply chains and bad production practices. Uh, And honestly, Lexicon is not immune to that. It's something that a lot of those supply chain decisions are made when things are going well Mm -hmm. and not a lot of care or consideration is given to who you're partnering with and how they may act or interact with you during such a tumultuous time like Mm -hmm. what we're in right now. Uh, So the strain that it puts on supplier partnerships is pretty incredible. And that has really brought to the forefront instances where we are partnered very favorably with companies and manufacturers mm-hmm. who can get us what we need for to support our clients and our client firms. From a remote work standpoint, this has changed the landscape of American corporate culture. Uh, some would say for the better, others, you know, the jury's still out. But at from a supply chain perspective, we are able to offer uh, firms – a full array of technical hardware so that their home offices, Mm -hmm. uh, that client employee home offices can actually be up and running and do it in a pretty expeditious manner. We're able to provide them with the normal office supplies that they may need. We've been able to, for the folks who are kind of hoteling in Mm -hmm. and sharing spaces, Uh, providing a lot of cleaning supplies, disposable masks, things like that to make sure that when those employees are in the office, they feel comfortable being there. That's the most important part. You want to eliminate that that distraction that they may have in the back of their mind that they are just not comfortable where they're working. Yeah. So uh, that brings up a good point. You know, I was thinking back to a couple months ago, we were all working from home constantly every single day. Now we're coming in here and there or whatnot. But when we came back to the office, when the office opened back up, there was plenty of materials that we needed to be safe. There was hand sanitizer everywhere, antibacterial wipes. But how, I mean, given what the whole world was going through at that time, how were you able to achieve that and make sure that when we came back to the office, we had everything we needed to be safe? It's really about communication and networking, being able Mm -hmm. to uh, communicate across a variety of different types of companies, whether that be 
uh, warehousing and distribution, rep sales organization, or even going to straight to a manufacturer like a, a Germex, for instance, mm-hmm. and approaching them about the need. It also helps to be well connected not only within your own industry, but also other industries of similar professional services like I mentioned public accounting mm-hmm. before. Uh, we were actually able to get thousands of bottles of hand sanitizer through a connection oh. that I have in public accounting in a, in a public firm here in St. Louis yeah. where I got connected to somebody who was helping bottle that Germex, oh, for example. That's awesome. You know, I'm, again, going back, I think about that attorney at that single law firm you know, I'm going to Target. I'm going to other places to get the things like Germax for my staff. And we all know those were out. So those connections really make a difference. Yeah, if you're if you're only looking out for yourself and you don't have someone like Lexicon watching over you and your operations, you'll find yourself waiting in line at Home Depot to try to get that last mm-hmm. bottle of spray disinfectant. And we can provide that for you. Wow. We were able to provide that for very big multi-state law firms without much mm-hmm. of an issue. I feel safer That's already. Awesome. Yeah. And you notice how he didn't plug anybody right there. I saw he that. stopped himself from that. saying a brand name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chris, I know we were talking a little bit earlier in the conversation today about asset planning. Um, we, can we dive into that a little bit more, explain that concept and how it can benefit law firms? Absolutely. It It really is founded in a partnership between lexicon services groups. It's Lexicon Procurement, Lexicon Information Technology and Information Systems, and Lexicon Finance and Accounting. The three groups partnered together to make sure that, first, we are helping you budget and forecast for expenses throughout the next fiscal period or over, you know, transcending fiscal periods even. Uh, But then beyond that, it's about getting the most from a profit and loss standpoint out of your assets and doing as little impact or having as little impact to your bottom line as possible. So an example of that would be if you're buying a $8,000 Mac Pro, we want to make sure that if you're paying for that up front, if you have the cash flow means to pay for that up front, we're going to help you capitalize and depreciate that over the life of that, that, Mac, of that piece of equipment. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you're not going to consume that equipment the day that it arrives, and we don't want you to recognize that expense the day that it arrives. We Mm -hmm. want to help you break that up over time. So before this episode started, you and I were talking uh, about duty of care. So tell our listeners what exactly that is and about those four golden rules and how firms can really take advantage of that when they're partnering with Lexicon. Sure. So – In addition to the procurement group, I'm also responsible for travel meetings and events. Mm -hmm. With the current state of our nation, the global pandemic, civil unrest, depending on where you are within the country, this has and can put employees in danger, whether they are traveling or not. Mm -hmm. Our travel platform comes with a duty of care offering that will allow you to kind of keep track of what employees are doing, where they're going, where they might be traveling. It provides warnings if they are traveling. It will provide warnings if they expect to be in an office that might be in proximity of mm-hmm. some danger okay. or or some warning flag, uh, some red flag that comes up that they need to be aware of. Uh, it also provides a method of communicating with them directly and in in mass. And if you're a larger firm, reaching out to 50, 100, 150 employees, Mm -hmm. reaching out to all of those employees simultaneously, you may not be set up for that. And if there is no data access because of some geographical catastrophe, they may only have cellular service. Mm -hmm. And being able to reach out to them through multiple methods so that you can ensure that they are safe, they know They're that the message, they yeah. know that you are uh, in the process of uh, pulling in some emergency services if they are required. All of this is part of our duty of care offering. That's that, awesome. Yeah, that's. I mean, nothing to joke about. You, you definitely go from saving, you know, 
dollars saving the bottom line to saving lives. You're exactly right. And that's something that is very important for medium-sized firms because they may not have the, the corporate legal backing that a lot of bigger firms have, but they have much the same risk and liability yeah. from a duty of care standpoint. Mm-hmm. Every corporation in America has a duty of care liability or obligation to the employees under their charge that they have to go so far in the in the process of identifying risks and those have to be foreseeable risks. They have to be able to warn employees of those risks. They have to train employees of uh, risk mitigation and emergency procedures in certain circumstances, and then they have to document that they warned the employees about mm-hmm. those risks, that those employees accepted that risk, went on with business as usual, mm-hmm. and then also documenting those completed trainings. Yeah. So many firms nationwide, so many companies are not taking those four necessary steps. And in the event of a dire situation or, heaven forbid, a loss of life Mm -hmm. could be found negligent because they did not go those necessary steps. That makes sense. So say, for example, one of the firms that Lexicon is working with, they're in a situation like that. You know, maybe they sent one of their attorneys to a trade show or whatnot and something happened, some act of nature, some local event, and they they couldn't necessarily get home or they needed to be made aware of what was going on and what the next steps were. Um, can you give more of a real life example of how you would handle that? Sure. So – First and foremost, the duty of care platform identifies that you have an employee in this area and there has been some kind of event. That gets flagged to our travel and events manager. Mm -hmm. And the travel and events manager then takes necessary steps depending on the situation to either reach out to the employee to check if they're okay, Mm -hmm. uh, if it's an even – if it's a catastrophic situation to – in parallel, reach out to emergency services and let them know you have an employee in a certain location mm-hmm. uh, who is not native to the area. And then as a secondary, alerting the employer that this event is happening. Obviously, mm-hmm. the employee's safety is the most paramount and becomes the priority. But notifying that employer that there has been a, an event that may affect the well-being of their employee. Yeah comes as a part of that service as well. Okay. And then just depending on what you find out or what the situation is, your next steps are based off that? Yes. And I assume it's all pretty real time too? Yes. I mean, we're... It has to be, but position, (laughs) This position and the duty of care offering is something that is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, never ending. There's no off time. That's correct. That's great. I feel like, uh, you know, we were starting the conversation talking about procurement, talking about the different, you know, responsibilities. And we got into this whole discussion around, you know, care and taking care of employees and and life-saving. I mean, it's just – it's it's, uh, so much more than what I anticipated even going into this conversation. The world, the the employment world, especially in America, is changing. It's changing very rapidly. And employees have begun to – expect more from their employers, Mm -hmm. expect more from not just a compensation and benefits standpoint, but expect work-life balance and all of those other softer offerings that employers are beginning to really push to the front of their employment letters. This is another one of those, but it comes with very real, very expensive liabilities if not satisfied. So now I have you purchasing my house, purchasing my cars. Can I hire you on the um, side? And to, like, now I want you to life. make sure my family is safe <laughs> in case of a of a national disaster. I think uh, if you wouldn't mind doing that for me, that would you would be a great personal yeah. assistant. You'd make way less, and I, sure. I couldn't I couldn't give you benefits either. But you could really he get my just life went together. through what's important, know, right? and you're like I can give you nothing, but I will take everything. From but you. I can make sure that you are appreciated by your employer. Right. <laughs> I appreciate you, Chris. Well, let, let's change it up. Let's talk more about billable hours. Okay. So, you know, it all comes down to that. It comes down to billable hours. I'm in a law firm. I'm trying to do this myself. I'm trying to figure it out. How many hours will I spend, say, per week, per whatever factor you'd like to use, on procure all of the things that we discussed today? Sure. So if we're only looking at procurement, 
we're talking about for it's directly related to firm size. Mm-hmm. And if you're on the smaller side, you can look at that procurement activity, whether that be sourcing, the purchasing, the customer service side of something didn't come in mm-hmm. as expected and you were trying to manage a return. That's in the neighborhood of five to 10 hours a week. And depending on, it doesn't sound like a lot. But, but it's a full day. But yes. <laughs> and depending on how or who in your organization may be doing that function, mm-hmm. if you have a staff member uh, or an assistant who's performing that role, it's probably in the neighborhood of $20,000 a year. Oh, wow. Uh, if you have an attorney doing that function, that could be up to $50,000 a yeah. year in, in billable revenue that you're missing out on that's, because that's you have someone doing something that is not their expertise. Yeah. From a larger firm standpoint, uh, they could be in the neighborhood of 120 to 150 hours. This is a firm of, you know, 75 to 125 people. 120 to 150 hours a week wow. is a lot of time. I mean, that is multiple staff yeah. members. And if you're ignoring things like benefits, if you're just talking about an hourly billable rate, mm-hmm. that could be on the low side, ninety dollars to $100,000 a year in billable oh, wow. revenue, all the way up to three quarters of a million if you have an attorney who's performing or attorneys who are performing that function. Yeah. And then on the flip side, I mean, obviously, that's huge. I mean, I could end this podcast right there, and I think we'd we'd make our point. But sure. at the end of the day, too, you know, you, you own your own firm, and maybe you have a, a paralegal or an admin that's helping you with this kind of work. They're going to get upset, too, because this is not what they went to school to do. This is not what they took this job to do. It's taking them away from what they really want to do as well, not only the billable hours, but then you're going to get people, you know, working for you within your firm that just aren't happy because they're spending time like managing returns or finding the best price on pencils or, you know. Waiting on hold for a tier three supervisor. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to tell you We've the same thing the last yes. supervisor told you. <laughs> no, that makes perfect sense. And like I said, I mean, I think that last point was huge. Uh, putting it in terms of a dollar amount is just, it's mind blowing. That was a lot of money. And I never would have ever thought that something that we all do partially on our day to day to some extent can really cost us that much time and that much billable hours. We're the experts at it. Yeah. Let, let us help you. <laughs> you taught me something today. <laughs> no. So that being said, I mean, looking back at everything we talked about today, um, if you had to tell all the listeners three things that they should really walk away with today after listening to this episode, what would those three things be? I'd say first and foremost, the world is a big place. The internet is a much, much bigger place. Most of sourcing and, and procurement activities are done online today. Mm -hmm. And it can be really, really challenging if it's not your expertise, being able to sift through what one company promises versus what one company can actually deliver. And we do that every day. We have trusted supply partners Mm -hmm. that we can bring to you and greatly exceed your expectations. Yeah. You're not starting fresh with every ask. You've done it before. That's exactly right. You know right. who a good resource is. You know who a good vendor is. You Many know times how much you should be paying. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yep. Number Se- two, what else? Secondarily, you know, companies of all sizes are subject to that duty of care obligation for their employees. Very few, I want to say probably less than 15% are actually satisfying that obligation and mitigating their risk that they have for employment of those employees who may be traveling or may find themselves in a compromised uh, Mm -hmm. workspace, work area in danger. As a part of our travel travel services offering, it's important to us that we let employers know, let firms know that we have that offering and can very easily help you satisfy that liability in a very systematic way, mm-hmm. all the while taking advantage of our travel services will allow you to save ten to forty percent on your travel expenses wow. as as you're booking. Third, it's really important to stress that no one in the legal services space has the supply chain network that we have. Mm-hmm. They may advertise that they do business in so many states, but they don't do business. In so many states, with the breadth of services that we offer, whether that be 
plant care services in the office, Mm -hmm. document storage and shredding, uh, software, IT hardware, security services. And I'm not just talking about the service that you come in and you punch your code in (laughs) and it stops buzzing in your ear. This could be that you've had a client or a family member of a client who is Mm. unsatisfied with the way that a case has played out and they may have made Which some is reality. Yes, they may have made some threats or in some way an employee may feel threatened by an interaction. Mm-hmm. We can go out and dispatch that security service whether armed or unarmed, mm-hmm. your the client's preference mm-hmm. to the location to ensure that there is something standing between those employees and a disgruntled yeah. member of the public. Wow. That's quite the offering. Yeah. Full service Kinda. right there. Uh, yeah. I feel very, very safe. I'm and glad very, he's on like, our my side. My eyes are open. <laughs> yeah. It's everything that can really happen. It's crazy. <laughs> um, I, I personally learned a lot today. I, I did mean, too. I've worked in multiple industries. We've always had a procurement team, but I don't think I've ever truly learned uh, as much of what they do until today. And the impact it has on, yeah, on the exactly, business. Yeah, exactly. The impact. Uh, we have uh, the great benefit of touching money for clients and for the company every day. It's very easily quantified from a profit and loss standpoint, but so much of what we do is more than that. It's about creating the right culture within your organization, making sure that employees know that they're cared for and their best interests and well-being are looked after. Uh, We can help with all of those things. Yeah. Lauren, he was so good. We might have him back. What do you think? I was going to ask you, what do you think? Are we done with him? Or I do don't we... think so. I think okay. there's still some questions to be asked. And we have to see what else he wears next time. That's right. I wonder if it'll, do you think, if he'll bring you one. Do you think he has gift? more than one? No, no, probably not. Oh, he does. He's shaking his head. No, he do- he's lying. I bet you he has like 10. <laughs> 10? Uh, five. 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 Wow. All? Are yeah. they all different colors? Well, Are they different whenever patterns? You, whenever you look at them. Oh, my God. Is it reversible? <gasps> look at that. So does that patterns. count as four or does that count no, as one? No, this is one. Okay. Because it's all one color palette. My hmm. wife and mother-in-law taught me all about this. Aww. So what we need to do, I think we need to have a podcast specifically on so this topic. Pocket squares? <laughs> pocket squares. Do, you, it's do we need to invite question. your wife and your mother-in-law, or can you handle that? I got it. No, Chris, <laughs> thank you so much for coming today. Like I said, we learned a lot. Um, the benefits are obvious, too. You know what I mean? This is something that you can look at as your firm and really see how much you're saving, what the benefits are. You know, it's clear. There's no questions there. So yes. it's an easy one. Definitely. Thank you for coming today. Thank I mean, you for having me. If you ever want to talk about supply chain and get in the, uh, <laughs> the nitty, nitty gritty, yes. oh, I took the words right out of you. Or sit down right. and read a contract together. Ooh, Ooh that would be exciting. Maybe Saturday Don't tease night. me. Saturday yeah. night. <laughs> Don't tease me. I'll bring the milk. We could call it pocket squares and contracts. <laughs> oh, you, you, you have my heart I and like, my full oh, attention. I like 2%. Ooh, chocolate milk, too. I haven't had chocolate milk. I do milk like though. chocolate milk. Yeah. All right, let's Oreos. do chocolate milk. Can we? Can we do chocolate milk? With some Oreos? Is that too crazy? Yeah. yeah. Double stuff? Mm, mega stuff. Oh. I have not had the mega done. stuff. Done. I'm out. <laughs> Is we it, have this. you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know why they make other Oreos anymore. Chris, thank you so much for coming. We'll probably have you back sometime. I think it went well. I think it went well, too. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for tuning in to The Lex Factor. Lexicon takes care of business so you can take care of law. Learn how to build a better practice at lexiconservices.com.